What is up folks? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, my name is Ethan Page and you're watching Backwards Hat Traditional Archery. On today's video, um, I want to talk a little bit about ground hunting, how I ground hunt and some of the techniques that I've learned and tips over the years that have really aided in my success and being able to harvest uh, quite a few whitetails off the ground, no blind, um, sometimes even no camouflage and uh, the whole ground hunting thing really seems to interest a lot of you guys so I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, go find a couple spots in the woods that kind of show you the layout, what's going on, what you need to look for and uh, with particular sign and then how to set up on that sign. So let's jump right into it. So you might be wondering, Ethan, why ground hunting? Why no blinds? You know, whenever there's tree stands out there nowadays, saddles, all that sort of thing. One thing uh, to think about, and it's probably one of the reasons I think that I've done it so much, is um, that stuff costs a lot of money, right? Um, a lot of us don't have that kind of budget, especially if you uh, are younger, like uh, my wife and I are, and have little kids, mouths to feed, guys and gals, uh, the ability for you guys to spend the money on a saddle system or spend the money on a uh, lone wolf assault, something like that, you're going to be out some serious money. And everybody wants to be mobile, right? I know I like to be mobile. Mobile is something that is very important to me. So I guess part of the reason I wanted to make this video is to prove that you can be very effective by just hunting on the ground, finding a spot that's out of sight, out of mind, and hunting whitetails. So I'm out here on, in the woods and I'm going to set the camera up and kind of show you some tips and tricks. So hang with me. So as you guys will see, got this trail, right? Yeah, this is a man-made trail, but imagine this is anything, a logging road or a actual narrow game trail. As you see up here in front of me, there's nothing but tall grass and weeds and stuff like that. Off here to my right, there's some huge uh, cottonwood trees that are like this big around. And you could tuck yourself into somewhere like that. But in this particular situation, and in any situation, what you're looking for is that comment that I made earlier. Out of sight, out of mind. Put yourself at their level. Even, you know, walking at our head level, which is just a couple feet above theirs. If you're walking along focused on foraging what's in front of directly in front of you or for the most part below you but look back here behind me on this side of the trail yeah there's a down log that you could set up behind right here uh, or down top off this maple tree you could set up right there uh, nestle yourself back up in here I'll show you that here in a second but if it was me and I was trying to hunt this trail as long as the wind allowed for it, I would be hunting an east wind, which means the wind's blowing from that direction, this direction, across the trail, putting the scent out here behind me where I don't expect the deer to come from, and I would set up back in here. See how there's all these, not only there's grass back here and small saplings and brush, but there's several big trees that are as big as I am that I'll kind of just blend in with because there's already big, blocky, dark things back there. Consider the fact that, as I've talked about, if you guys go back, I think last year I did a video on camouflage and what deer actually see. Deer do see some kind of some greens and yellows, but for the most part, they are colorblind. Supposedly, there's some theory out there that they're hypersensitive to like blue uh, on the blue spectrum of eyesight. But for the most part, you can assume that they see some dull green and yellow. But other than that, because you'll see them eating green, you know, green grass and green stuff over things that aren't right. So I think they do being herbivores. Green is something that they do pay attention to. But other than that, everything's pretty well uh, gray and uh, black and white out there in the world for the whitetail. And their eyesight is not that great. It is. It's better than a lot of animals, but it's quite a bit you know, worse than a human's. So if you can imagine an animal bumbling through the woods uh, like an old man with thick glasses, that's kind of how they are. 
but they know what things look like. They know that trees don't have a head and shoulders, and they know uh, that large things like humans, and which are to us, or to the deer, sorry, we're trying to appear as a tree, essentially, they don't make quick jerky movements. A lot of things in the woods, except for other animals and probably predators, don't make quick jerky movements. So if you put yourself off the trail, I like to be directly to the left or the right of a trail. Um, I don't like to set myself up for sh shots where an animal has to pass me before I can get a shot or where an animal is, you know, walking into me or anything like that. I like to be completely off of the trail um, laterally. So if I'm wanting to take a shot right here, I'm going to be set up right back there in those shadows. Or vice versa, if I want to take a shot right here, I'm going to be set up back in that brush somewhere. Or I might wait for an animal to get all the way to here so I can shoot from in here or from behind this log. I don't want to have to let animals get by me and stuff like that. That's too many variables. I like broadside shots whenever I'm hunting at eye level. So if you can just put yourself, you know, as the deer is walking by, by the time they're getting ready to pass you and you make your move, they're already paying attention to what's ahead of them again. Ahead of them again. So you're also having to time your movements. Instead of you being set up, um, I like this log here. So instead of you being set up in this on behind this log, instead of you drawing way back here, if I'm a deer, I'm still kind of paying attention because deer can see almost behind them. I'm still kind of paying attention to what's straight beside me, but mostly in front of me at angles like this. Humans, we can only focus for the most part directly in front of us in a small window of the world. Deers is a lot wider, but their peripheral is almost to the back of their head and directly behind them because their eyes are on the side of their head. So they can still catch that quick jerky movement even if it's like back here. But for the most part, at a relaxed animal that's walking around, you know, feeding and browsing, as soon as she gets to, let's say, this point or the deer gets to this point, its focal point is already past me for the most part. If it's a relaxed animal that's not all freaked out and on alert, its focal point of its vision is already out here in front of me somewhere, or past me, and I'm right here drawing my bow, getting ready to take that shot. So that is why I think that setting up directly to the left or the right is going to give you the most freedom and being able to get away with getting that bow drawn and uh, getting the shot off. So you guys are sitting over there on that trail right now, and I am behind this fallen maple tree. I'm about eight yards off the trail or so, and this is not a bad spot. Um, it's really a little bit close Unless I'm off of a field edge to where I'm, I've got a lot of foliage to block me and you have the contrast of, la the contrast of light into the darkness of the woods. Because again, I can't emphasize the shadows. The dark places where they already can't see that good, but you contrast back into those dark places uh, with the rest of the gray, everything else that the deer see, that's going to give you your best bet to get one over and get drawn so me being only about oh eight yards or so off that trail this is a little bit close i would rather be between 10 and 15 yards because that gives me an even better opportunity so something else now that i'm here back here up against this big maple tree now i'm about 12 or 15 yards away from you guys this would be another good spot to set up right back here. Yeah, I'm not next to a tree or anything like that, but I'm nestled down in the grass. I've got room to draw. I could easily see the vitals of the deer and get the arrow over top of the grass from right here. But I'm back here, out of sight, out of mind. As the deer goes by that trail where you guys are sitting right now, 
again with that focal point of its vision, it's already passed me. It might catch my movement with its peripheral vision, but as far as being in focus, I'm not worried about that. But yeah, you could set up against that big tree or behind this log right here and have some probably pretty good opportunities or even get back in here against all this thick brush, a spot like this where I may be limited a little bit more on my shot, but I have got some of this foliage kind of contrasting, creating depth. If you guys are familiar with photography, it talks about depth of view and depth of field. So if you set your camera right behind an object, that object's in focus and you're out of focus. Or if you make you in focus and the object between you and the camera is blurry, it creates a depth of view. Same thing. If you put foliage in between you and that animal, more brush, more stuff like that, that's other stuff that's going to catch their eye first before you catch their eye, and it's going to be harder for them to pick you up. So setting off, if you're going to be in a more open spot, you've got to have something to contrast against. So I got a piece of grass stuck in my bowstring. Uh, so over here, you're going to probably want to look at that down tree or that big tree with the saplings around it or this base of the tree over here where there's the still two big maple trunks coming up and then the log laying down on the bottom. There's lots of spots right here that you could set up, but my favorite is right behind you and I'm going to show you that right now. So guys, as you can see back here in these shadows off the trail, I'm still only about maybe 8 or 10 yards off the trail, but look at the size of these giant cottonwood trees. And look at all this dark brush and grass and stumps back in here. This is exactly what I would be looking for to set back up off the trail to hunt something like that trail that you guys are sitting out there on right now with the deer going this direction. I'd want a wind, ideally going from where the trail to me, but if it was somewhat parallel, that's okay. As long as the deer aren't going to smell me before they get to me on the trail or uh, smell me as they get in front of me because my wind is blowing straight in front of me onto where I'm trying to shoot. But setups like this are perfect this kind of gives you the idea of what i'm talking about of the out of sight out of mind i could don't even have to be wearing camouflage you could be wearing a red plaid shirt it doesn't matter i'm not trying to stand out in the wide open in the middle of a field and shoot deer you've got still whether you have camouflage or not you've got to get out of their line of sight you have to get back in here in the dark places especially when they're in a light spot like you guys are out there more in the open this contrast of the darkness to the light it messes with their vision it makes it harder for them to pick up on the movement and it makes it even harder for them to just pick you out to see that you're even a threat so back in here behind this giant this this cottonwood tree probably has a four foot base kind of tucked in beside it to where i can still shoot I've got a nice wide shooting window, and then I could even take another shot back over here if I wanted to, or off this direction if I wanted to. About good, uh, three good shooting lane opportunities in case one gets by you um, or something like that, or you can't get it stopped in time to take the shot. But all in all, guys, that kind of gives you the idea. I could go on for hours talking about this, but if you guys have any interest in hunting off the ground, then take some of these key points away that I've talked about and apply them to your hunting areas where you're at. That's all I've got for this video, guys. Again, I'm not talking about whenever I say hunting on the ground, no camo, no blinds. I'm not talking about just sitting out in the open on a bucket expecting to kill deer. It's not going to happen. Deer are extremely sensitive to movement. Deer know, for the most part, what human beings look like, that trees and bushes don't have a head and shoulders. This profile outline of a human doesn't look like anything else in nature. And it's really evolved and bred into them to be that way. But 
if you can find the dark places off the trail, pay attention to what you're focus on. Learn about what they see. Learn about how they see. Learn, learn about what draws their, their uh, attention, what kind of movement. Uh, experiment. I've spent years now just in a tree stand paying attention to what I can get away with that deer can either see or not see. I just shot a, a little buck a couple days ago, filled my buck tag here in Missouri, on the ground, no camo, no blind. Um, but I was tucked back in off a field edge. I had a field or had a nice trail coming out on the field off to my left, running alongside of me. And I was just standing up, leaning against a tree that was only about six inches in diameter. And I shot that deer at 10 yards. But I've, yes, I was standing. You can stand, sit, whatever. That's up to you. I was standing. Yes, it was a small tree, but I was surrounded by brush. <clears throat> and I was back in off a field edge. I was in a dark spot. That deer had no idea I was there until he finally saw me at full draw while he was at 10 yards and it was too late. What the industry and the system is telling you uh, that you need and what you got to do to kill deer and realize that you really can get away with quite a bit more than you think you can, but you got to know the animals and you got to know your timing and when to do those things. Pay attention to those focal points. If they're focused on something right in front of them, around them, you can get away with a little bit more. Get off the trail, uh, stress that distance a little bit, put that buffer between you. Just because you want to be able to get a close shot doesn't mean you should set up five yards off a trail. That's really close. I would encourage you guys to, like I talked about earlier, look at that 10 to 12, 15 yards off the trail mark. That's a good buffer zone if you guys are comfortable shooting that far. Uh, right in that median distance of your comfort zone. That's going to be the best thing possible to keep those deer from spotting you. So anyway, guys, this video has been long enough. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Comment below. I'd love to interact with you guys. And uh, get outside, shoot straight, get in the woods too as uh, the fall weather is here and the rut's right around the corner. Catch you guys next time.